And now we are recording. Let me mute this. Good morning, Damien. Good evening in uh, Paris. Good afternoon. Middle of the night in Asia. This is the new <laughs> world. We are live from an altered space of consciousness anyway. Um, very excited to be with Damien uh, because you are quite an animal out there, you know, mixing a passion for breath work and for movement. So um, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. My pleasure to be here, Alex. Thank you. Yeah. Why don't you start by just telling us a little bit about, yeah, who you are, what you do? Yeah, great. Um, well, my name is Damien Kai Norman. Um, people also call me Day, so that's a nickname you can use if you like. Um, yeah, I've been, I feel like, redefining my, my purpose, my vision for a, a while now and trying to come into more clarity with what exactly I am offering. And for me, the, the vision that I have is to create a, yeah, a therapeutic uh, container uh, from which then to offer modalities such as breath work, uh, fascial stretch therapy, a type of body work, um, movement and dance, like movement coaching, this kind of thing. And then, yeah, to offer that through the, the container of professional counseling and therapy and somatic-based therapy. Um, so looking to yeah, find that harmony between mind, body, spirit, and our emotional body. And that's kind of the, uh, yeah, the vision that I have for, for myself and for the world. Yeah. It's pretty, um, I wouldn't say rare. Yeah, it is rare to find someone who's really incorporating movement and dance with the somatic aspect. So can you tell us a little yeah. about why and how you see all these interconnecting uh, with each other yeah absolutely well i i come from a professional dance background so i should start there uh, i had a career in, in dance for for many years and still perform still teach here and there it's a little bit less uh, in my you know my, my focus these days but definitely still an integral part of who i am and how i operate where, where, I think that, where were you dancing professionally yeah so my career mostly was in toronto um in, in canada and then I was also in Germany for a few years, dancing there with a few companies as well. So that was what mostly kind, where my what, career. What kind of dance? Uh, so I was trained in contemporary ballet and modern dance. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can, can we, yeah. if if we look online, can we can we see you among? You know, <laughs> yeah, or, there's a few there's a few videos you can find. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and 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 anything I don't know I, I I don't know shit about dance, but. Anything famous? Any any performance that we might have heard of? No, no, not, nothing, nothing famous. Unfortunately, I'm not that uh, well known. But uh, yeah, had had a good career and, and had definitely lots of cool videos. If you want to check it out, I have a, a YouTube page. You can you can go and look at it. it's a movement manifest okay. on YouTube. I'll, I'll put the links um, in in the notes. You'll send me all that. So you guys can beautiful. Um, yeah, but like you know, for me, if I look at I think about my colleagues and and dancers on a whole. There is um, very much a an understanding and a connection to the emotional body, and, and you know, art uh, itself, of course, is is highly based in our intuition, in our emotions, in in that yeah, energetic body, right? And so, I think for me, dance is actually a beautiful example of how physicality, like raw, expressive physicality, actually beautifully merges with this emotional. Um, component this this sense of like a higher self right and so I think that's actually where very much where this vision started is just recognizing that in dance and seeing how movement is inherently tied to how we express ourselves emotionally right sometimes emotions can't really be um, can't be really expressed uh, as articulately through words and really what we need to do is is tune into a felt charge a felt sensation in the body Right, and and that is actually um, the foundation for really transforming the way that we experience trauma and experience um, difficult emotions. Is to actually have a deep connection to our physical body and our ability to feel comfortable and safe um, and open in our bodies, which of course then ties back into having a physical practice. Right, so that's kind of I think the the foundation of where that started. And did you come to? I, I fully agree. Did you come to that from a personal experience? Where was that your way of expressing traumas or you know childhood 
uh, issues. Is, is that is that how you came to that? Yeah, absolutely. I have uh, my own, certainly my own trauma. Uh, come from a complicated childhood. Uh, some physical abuse on my my dad's side. He dealt with, um, still deals with substance use issues, anger management issues. So for sure, there was a lot of, of trauma that I worked through uh, through my dance career, and still to this day, you know, going through therapy and doing breath work. Breath work has been phenomenally transformative for integrating these these personal triggers and traumas of, of, for myself and for many other people as well. Do you feel yeah. they are the those traumas that you just uh, mentioned? Are they the source of, of why you are doing what you're doing in terms of what you, why you went to to dance? Is that what maybe that was not maybe the initial reason you went for it? But now that you reflect back on your career, do you think that was that was the the initial uh, impulsion? Impulse? I, I think it was a huge component to it, absolutely. Um, and, and interestingly enough, my dad himself, he uh, is a martial artist or, or was, and so there was this, I was, I was brought up in a more, um, yeah, with seeing this, the, how beautifully the body can move and express itself. Um, and so I think there was also that tying in there a little bit, like some layers of my personal uh, upbringing. And then, yeah, for sure, this sense of, yeah, of needing to, to express myself, but um, yeah, that at the time and needing to work through, I think also for me and maybe for a lot of people, my personal trauma has shown up very consistently as, as pain, as, as physical discomfort of, of actually um, a great deal of tension and um, yeah, just cr chronic pain to a certain a degree. And I think that dance and movement, uh, you know, movement being medicine in many ways has allowed me to not only release some of that uh, chronic pain, but also to build a relationship with it. So I, I say for sure that dance has, has been instrumental in that and definitely up, unconsciously, I probably was drawn to that for sure. Yeah. You know what, I, I do, you know, if you look at animals, it's the two birds that are fighting over a river, when they move away from each other, they start shaking their wings. Totally. Yeah. And it, it, it feels like in our culture that that's not okay. You know, I cannot just start shaking. So I'm going to get drunk on Saturday night, go to a club, and that's a container totally. that is socially acceptable for me to relieve. Yeah. And then people yeah. would say, oh my God, if I don't go to Zumba every Thursday, I, I, I'm not functioning. If, if I don't have my Saturday night escape, then I'm not functioning. So we have created those socially acceptable ways for us to express to our bodies think that you know intuitively we want to do but you know you can't just oh well you can but it's just not acceptable yeah. to just move like an animal and shake like an animal in in, a, in society so would you relate to that yeah i can see yes absolutely like so completely on point i, I couldn't agree more i think you said it exactly so like um yeah, even even the idea of just like of just shaking, right? Like that's a practice that we do in Qigong, for example, and 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 dance, and I'm sure many other physical practices. And yeah, it, it is a, a it's it, it is from my understanding, it is the sense of fight or flight, right? When a when a an animal is in a more um, combative or you know a, a sympathetic state right where it's needing to either show up and and actually engage physically or get the heck out and run away it is after those moments that they'll stop and shake and release that pent-up energy right and, and we don't do that at all and and that's like just the, like to think about the the amount of stress that we experience on a day-to-day -day basis maybe it's not inherently like you know so obvious like we're not getting into fights every day but we are taking on tremendous stress through through so many means, through our emotional interactions, through our own like you know uh, mental pressure that we put on ourselves for achieving some sort of success, from our jobs, from just the busyness of our lives, and yet so little of the time do we take conscious time daily to then uh, release that stress through something like shaking, uh, which animals will do like you know many times during a day. So yeah, I totally agree. So now let's 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 take an example in Damien Damien's life. You ha you ex if you can remember the last very stressful situation you experienced, whether it was a conflict with someone close to you or professional or financial, you know, can you remember of the last time you were in really stress, which is not something you control. It's you're experiencing something. Now, now all of a sudden it's beyond your control. You get triggered because 
you know, your dad abused you and it's remember, reminding you of that situation or relation with your mom. It's all, always mom and dad's shit, you know, often. And c can you re put yourself back into that, that moment and, and tell us what happened and how, if you managed to deal with it in, in a conscious way, can you walk mm -hmm. us through how you do it? How do you deal with stress? Yeah, yeah, that's a, a great question. I, you know, I'm still learning, I think is a really important thing to, to state, right? It's never a perfect process. And um, I actually had, had a, so I'm doing something called the presence process right now, um, which is doing a, a breath wave, breath work practice two times a day, uh, while in combination with a really beautiful book that you read through and has prompts and, and kind of guides you through this self, uh, therapeutic self integration practice, right? And often what will What's happen with these sort of, What's say again? What is the book? It's called The Presence Process. It's by Michael, Michael Brown, I want to say. Yeah. Um, yeah, incredible book. I would highly recommend it. Uh, really, really beautiful stuff. And what kind but, of uh, breathing? Like most, what kind of breath work do yeah. you do? Yeah, what so he actually has a, he has a particular breath practice that I, th I believe he recommends doing 15 minutes uh, seated and actually through the nose, um, whereas I have taken it. Yeah, exactly. So a linked breath cycle uh, in and out. He recommends that um, that the the inhale and the exhale are quite similar in duration and like intensity and length. But it's a very calming, meditative, very soft uh, nose breath practice. Um, well, yeah, which which I also would recommend, and I think it's a beautiful way to to breathe. For me personally, I do a a breath wave style practice where I'm breathing uh, on my back for 20 minutes and using um, a very soft mouth breathing practice would um, do, are you set on uh, you know let's say five breaths per minute or six breaths per minute is it is it kind of uh, timed or not or it's just a uh, normal relaxed breath that's a great question i actually have never timed it so i, I don't time it but I, I'd, I'd be curious to see uh what that is actually i'm not sure yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. please continue yeah yeah so anyways often with these these processes um well, well, for example, what the presence process would talk about is the idea of, of presence, or you might say like a higher power or, you know, something beyond yourself, some sort of maybe, um, hmm, I don't know, like, yeah, I should say higher power for now. I, I feel like that's a, a good word, but basically that you will encounter situations in your life that actually are there for you to learn something, right? And so this flip of perception that anything that you come in contact with in your life that is challenging or triggering is actually, you know, an opportunity, a very, very kind of Buddhist in this way, an opportunity to learn and grow, right? And often these things will happen more and, and more uh, intensely when you, when you are consciously engaging in these practices, right? Um, so anyways, I actually had one of those myself recently where I, I came into contact with someone who triggered me quite, quite strongly. And I haven't been triggered like that in a, in a long time. It's been quite, quite some time um, since I felt so uh, reactive. Do you want to share? What, what, do you want to share so we understand what, what it was about? Yes, absolutely. So yeah, so basically, I got into a. I won't go too much into story, but basically, I was I was triggered in sense of um, a feeling very manipulated, feeling very um, yeah controlled, and um, somehow yeah, I projected onto onto this person this feeling of that he was out to get me, that he was trying to control me, trying to somehow, yeah, undercut me in some way, right? And, um, and, I ha and that relates back to another childhood experience that I had and I, you know, that I've actually worked with a lot through my own, through therapy myself and through uh, breath work and these kind of practices. Um, and yeah, I think it was the first time in a while where, again, there's that difference between reacting and responding, right? So I, I noticed actually quite early that it was, there was tension in my body and normally I would be more attuned to that. However, I didn't, I didn't really recognize what was going on and so this tension in my body uh quickly turned to to like a an emotional charge right so this feeling of it's no longer just becoming a physical sensation it's now evolving into the emotional body and there is um in my case there was a, a need to defend a need to a need to um protect myself by becoming more uh, intense with my with my presence with my voice right something like this would be the kind of the moving into that emotional charge and then expressing the emotional emotional charge right and so I caught myself at that point in time when I was already quite heated and like whoa like what is going on 
I had not been here in a while. This is, you know, I, I need to check myself a bit and be like, okay. Um, and it's not that that's wrong to, for example, get intense or get angry. I think it's actually really important to, to note that, you know, when, when we're in, in these places, it's not about shame or guilt um, or blame, but about recognizing and knowing that, okay, that, that, that in some way needed to be expressed, but to, uh, but to recognize the, the charge before it becomes necessarily expressed, right? And then to know how to then release that charge, which might be through shaking or going and, and taking some time to breathe or maybe doing it yourself, like going and finding a pillow and screaming to that pillow, but doing it for yourself versus like putting it on someone else, right? Um, yeah, and then that being, that, so that was my process was like catching myself in, in this more intense place and then having to backtrack a little bit and be like, okay, like this is clearly I'm feeling triggered here and I need to shift how I am relating to the situation. Um, yeah. And, and okay, so you, you, you caught yourself, you became aware of it and you didn't look, and, and did you do anything after that to release it? Yeah, definitely. Breath work. Breath work is my go to um, 100%. I find that breath work is phenomenal for so no um, movement, no also, dance. No movement, no dance, no, no movement, no dance, no f hitting the pillow or martial art. Breath work. You went for breath work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like I, yeah, I want to think about exactly what happened afterwards. Yeah, no, I, I feel like in that moment, I, hmm, let me think about this for a moment. Really come back to that, that exact moment. I think I was, I was for me, I was quite, um, yeah, like, like shaken and, um, yeah, I, I had, had felt my experience was feeling quite attacked uh, and, and vulnerable and hence this need to, to protect and to, you know, um, yeah, become more intense to, for, for fear of being attacked. And so for me, I was quite uh, like shooken up and quite kind of, um, yeah, like in kind of almost a freeze afterwards where I wasn't quite sure what to do. And so for me, yeah, I, my, my instinct was to come and do something that really was centering and grounding and tuning back into feeling my body as opposed to kind of being in this frozen state. So yeah, breath work was my go-to. Um, what kind of yeah. breath work? Uh, breath wave. So yeah, so one I'm trained in. So it's uh, laying on your back, uh, breathing through a relaxed breath, but, uh, but a full body breath. So kind of that, that balance point between creating an expansive inhale through the diaphragm, through the pelvic floor, through the chest, solar plexus, uh, rib cage. Um, but then relaxing completely on the exhale and doing that entirely through the mouth and connecting, of course, the breath on both sides of the cycle. Yeah. And what happened? Did you yeah. release anything? What happened there? Yeah, I had a good cry. Uh, that was one thing that I had a very, very good cry. And that was of course, very helpful. Um, and what, what I also, in my about? Practice, did, was it related to the event? Was it, what, 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 what did you remember or relieve at that moment? Yeah, it, it reminds, it is related to a, a, a bit more of a story of, of when I was quite um, heavily manipulated for a, a, a long time. There was a relationship I had in my past where, where that happened, where there was a, a very real um, experience of being gaslighted and, and lied to for a long period of time. Um, and so I think there was just this, reckon, this um, realization in my body that, that even though I had done work through therapy in that way, there was still part of myself that clearly what needed to protect itself and was still being triggered in that moment. And so coming back to that part of myself that quite, that hadn't quite been touched yet, that hadn't quite been seen or felt yet and allowed to be, yeah, felt and experienced. And so I think that was the release for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. See, yeah. That's a fantastic example. Damien is fantastic. So it's for everyone to really understand what, what, what happened there because you experienced the situation, you got triggered, yeah. and, and then the, the importance of that moment is, is really crucial for everyone to realize this is a gross opportunity. This is a moment where yeah. you realize, instead of going into, okay, I'm blocking that, I don't want to experience that, I'm going to run away, I'm going to protect myself, whether you're going to be defensive or escaping, it's, it's the same, it's just a defense mechanism, and it's your way of defending yourself, whether it's by reacting, in a, in a passive way or in an aggressive way, it's still, it's still the same, it's still a reaction. You witness, oh my God, something's uh, powerful is going on, which is 
not to the level of the what is really happening in the room there is something underneath that that is worth exploring and then you went into the breath and the breath yeah. got you the answer you the breath got you to really so it's not something that we can necessarily consciously identify when you think about it that's the yeah. limit of, of of verbal therapy and you said you went through therapy it has its own limitation because you need to understand totally. you need to, but the body has the memory so if you got the trigger and you right away or soon after it's still in that state able to go to to the breath with this beautiful connected yeah. breath then all of a sudden you access another state of consciousness that gets you the answer to the question that you were asking your body says what the hell is going on Totally. And, and that's the power of the breast. That's the power of all of a sudden um, giving you the answers you need to whatever question you're asking yourself. And that's a wonderful experience and wonderful for you to, to describe. So thank you so much for that. But it's really that idea, guys, that triggers are great. Now, when you are into that mindset and you've got tools like movement and breath, and I also use the eyes, then now all of a sudden you don't waste a good trigger. You don't waste a good crisis, you know? It is, oh, yeah. yay! So you're just already <laughs> just having that changes your relation to the incident. So instead of being into, oh, my ego is being affected, I am who someone else is just, and all of a sudden you're able to receive with compassion and actually with excitement and love. Say, oh, yeah, cool. Because this is how you grow. This is by going to your edges, you know, in, and this is really embracing discomfort. This is much more powerful than any ice bath or stunt that you see on TV. Yeah? This is real shit. It is personal. This is your own stuff. And, and I really loved how you described it because that was, that, was, that was a real. And for me, what's interesting is I expected that you would describe some kind of shaking, you know, some kind of, all right, I'm going to go into one of my movements. So um, I'm, I'm, and I do, so I, I do the same. So I'm interested. What I do also just for, for the audience, I like to journal. So maybe I won't yeah. go into, so you said grounding, the keys to ground. So just for me too, it's, it's, it's the idea is to getting it out. You, you, you get it out of you. So having yeah. a, a way to get it out of you, and sometimes it's just a piece of paper and a pen, but it's, it is there. So you are able to say all these things that you maybe, you know, maybe repress, maybe don't dare to say because you're going to be pretty rude. You're going to be pretty aggressive. You're going to say things that if you were verbalizing that you would regret, but it's you on your piece of paper. It's you and, and you're, it's like screaming in the wind, you know, you let it out. So having a way to let it out of the body is a guarantee that it doesn't stay in the body. And that's the key because if it stays in the body, trust me, you're going to pay. The body is going to make you pay for it. We store issues in our tissues. Yeah, totally. so it's coming out in forms of cancer, of autoimmune disease, and all those kinds of imbalances. So, you're, it, so let's go back to the movement. Yeah. Um, you didn't use movement uh, in, that, in that moment. You went for the breath. Um, yeah. yeah. I don't dance. So for me, I, I, I do it a little bit and I, I'm happy to talk about it because I use it in, in, in the eyes these days. But I'm interested in, you're a professional. I'm interested in, okay, insert the, the movement and the dance in this conversation. How would you do that? Totally. Well, yeah. So for example, actually, I had a, a really beautiful experience of dance later on afterwards where, um, yeah, we're, so for me, the breath is very much a integration tool. So a sense of, of, yeah, coming back into self and allowing myself to feel what needs to be felt. And then afterwards, once I felt like that had taken place and I felt a bit of a, a release, in this case, through crying, I also did some shaking actually during my breath as well. It should be uh, talked about. I, I use toning and shaking during my breath practice. Um, not a lot of it, but, but it's, it's sprinkled in there. But after that was uh, that experience was allowed to be released and felt and experienced, um, integrated. There was later in the evening I actually had a, a really beautiful session of dancing, and uh, it was much more of a, this joyful um, express expression of my body. And I think that's actually something that I've been playing with quite a bit lately, um, as a as a professional dancer, and also just as myself. And I'm sure many of us can relate. Um, I have a tendency to to compare myself to other people when I'm moving or when I am, yeah, creating movement in some way. And often the purpose of the movement is, can be for me, uh, more 
uh, technical in nature. So, you know, how can I refine this movement to be more fluid and skillful and graceful and whatever, right? As opposed to that night afterwards, I really tune into a sense of more ecstatic dance of just allowing my body to feel pleasure, to feel like it didn't need to prove anything, didn't need to do anything, just needed to, again, express itself through movement, which is the language of the body. And so I think like in that situation, there was a sense of coming back to myself and giving myself pleasure and love and communicating with my body through the medium of movement, um, which was, yeah, really, really quite a beautiful experience for me. So, yeah. 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 And, and for what I hear you say that it, you got to that state because of the release that you had through the breath and the breath totally. allowed you to re to go to, a little bit closer to who you are and figuring that out a little bit more because you had that aha uh -huh moment through the breath of saying, okay, that's still there. That's not cleared yet. Okay, let's be aware of it. And then after that, you've got that deeper connection to self that in, in, totally. in your world is expressed through, through, through movement and dance. Totally. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. I want to dance more. Yeah, that's <laughs> good, man. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. So tell us about how you work with people. How do you, you know, how do you, how, yeah, how does that work? Yeah, um, well, right now I offer one-on-one -on -one facilitation through breath work. Um, and I do incorporate a little bit of um, body work into my breath work uh, facilitation, as well as, yeah, encouraging toning, encouraging, um, you know, oming and allowing the, yeah, the voice to be expressed in that, in that uh, way. Um, shaking for sure and um yeah and just tuning into how i can help um yeah guide and allow the breath um cycle the breath practice to be more full in the body more expressed more relaxed more felt by the by the breather so that's the breath work and then i ask, offer uh, fascial stretch therapy um which again is a, a form of body work it's a beautiful form where basically you're taking the um yeah the fascial lines in the body through manipulating you know it might be the legs the back the arms the shoulders the neck and taking them through uh, lines of motion that open up the fascial lines in the body um yeah and we can use some you're touching people there this is touching totally people. so this is not something totally. you do online everything you do is offline yeah uh well uh, breathwork can be online i can i offer things online through breathwork for sure um, the FSC, unfortunately, I, there'd be no way to do that online. It's all very much like taking, like actually physically lifting up a leg, for example, and taking it through through space. So really quite manipulating the body. So I, yeah, there'd be no way of doing that online, unfortunately. There are some maybe similar techniques you can do using therabands, using straps uh, for yourself, but it's not quite the same. Um, yeah, yeah. And then I also do uh, movement coaching as well, um, using dance and movement flow um and uh yeah and then also the newest addition to that is that i'm going to school for a two-year professional counseling program in january so that's all set up to again include that therapeutic container to then work from as well yeah Sounds. tell us about the shaking and you said for sure shaking so it, so, it, look, it looks like it's a it's a must it's a must do if that's how i received it so what does shaking look like am i laying down and as i'm breathing i'm shaking on the ground am i doing that uh before i go into the breath well, tell us all of the above really like so the first place that I, I i feel like i learned shaking was was through dance and through floor work and so just the idea of you, you can take your palms together it'd be a little hard to see just on this screen but you can take your your palms together while you're while you're laying down on the floor and then shake your palms back and forth and then move that down towards your pelvis all the way back up to your head and use this pressure between the palms to move the body on the floor. It'd be a really lovely way uh, of, of shaking. And then, and that was, that tool in dance was to allow yourself to connect more to the floor and to really release and, and feel the floor underneath you. But it can be a great way just all again to just move the body and open up the, the lines of the body. And of course, just actual like shaking and, and moving through the floor uh, while you're breathing is also beautiful. And it's just, yeah, it's a way of, of allowing energy to move freely through the body, right? Um, and then, of course, the other place that I use, utilize that is Qigong. And Qigong uses, utilizes shaking uh, beautifully. So you can stand, do the same thing. And there's various ways of doing it. But basically, the way I would like to teach it is just having really soft, open feet. 
soft bent knee, so the joints are quite open and ready to receive, um, you know, a, a shake. And then starting with the pelvis being the, the focus point of, of, the, of the shake, it's really allowing the weight of the pelvis to drop down through the knees, down through the feet, and then allowing that reverberation to happen through the torso, through the head, through the neck, including the arms. And then, yeah, again, once that is established, that shake is established, then allowing the, the voice to be heard too, like allowing some grunts, some, some sounds, some sighs, some toning, and just again, that feeling of releasing energy, the releasing tension that's no longer serving. And so, yeah, beautiful practice you can do before your breath work. You can just you can just do during the day. You know, if you're feeling stressed or overwhelmed or a bit more heightened in yourself, maybe even just feeling tension, physical tension in the body. Yeah, lots of reasons to 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 shake. Yeah. And 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 do you have videos of all that of you guiding it? Is it? Uh, I have some Qigong videos. Yep. Um, I I don't have a video particularly on shaking, but I've used shaking in some of the body breath classes that i have and i utilize it in my my movement coaching as well so oh, yeah yeah let's put that all yeah. in the in the notes so guys you can actually watch 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 all that that's going to be super useful so you you said something that i i want to explore a bit more you said the purpose of the shaking would be to release um energy yeah can you talk to that a bit yeah yeah i think again like for me so if i'm thinking about energy as as a felt sensation in the body so let's say that there is an anxiousness is a great one we feel anxiety quite a bit in our day i feel um i'm certainly attuned to that myself more often these days especially with the social climate that we're in so if you are feeling um rushed overwhelmed if you're feeling like a bit quick in how you're speaking and how you're relating if you're not feeling centered and yeah, calm at home in your body, somehow just, you know, open and receptive, right? Um, this shaking can bring you back into that place of, of centeredness. So, yeah, so the tension, the energy I'm speaking of is this, this heightened vibration in the body, right? And again, that feeling of anxiousness is a great, is a really easy one to, to connect to. And so by shaking, we're actually physically releasing, emotionally releasing that anxiety, that tension, that we've experienced in the body. Um, and yeah, I don't, I can't really speak necessarily to the physiological uh, mechanisms there, but uh, experientially it works, works beautifully, yeah. I, I'll, I'll give it a try and you, 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 you feel the gaps. From my yeah. understanding, we are storing uh, negative emotions in a lower part of the body, in the belly and in our sex so this is where yeah. uh, resentment anger frustration sadness all oh, this that's where it's, it says oh i feel angry where does it feel you know and you can you can really feel it it's, you know it says oh it's in there you know it's in your it's in your guts and we say it yeah. in, i feel it in my guts okay? yeah. and and for me the idea i mean when when you when you shake when you move you kind of you you allow that tension to just be more have the space to to literally move mm -hmm. and the breath can then operate and then move this energy up and then when you said you know you you practice qigong or even dance all this idea of using having music that will increase the vibration and elevate your frequency and your vibration in the body all that idea is that we need to somehow move it up yeah. and 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 nice. and the shaking is kind of a a prep work in order to do that because if you you can do all the breath work you want all the movement you want if you haven't you know kind of kind of let go of released of that if it's still there nothing's going to happen it's going to be pretty dry and you can feel the people that breathe without having done that work that not mm. much is moving the body is holding on to that because you have to be mindful that if you are holding on for a long time to these emotions, the body doesn't want to let them go. They define who you are. Your personality has now been impacted by these years of, you know, suppression of emotion that are just being piling up and that be, that's me. I, this is who I am. And now all of a sudden, if you, anything you're going to do to change that, it's going to be blocked by the body because you, you, 
the body doesn't know what's what's the alternative how who else this is if not that what else so this shaking is almost a way to bypass the mind to says all right i don't care about what you think let's go through the body let's do these massages and shaking and let's go for the pain i love the pain i love pain as a signal meeting the pain and going for the pain i, I lay on nails and i go through massages where i scream and 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 whenever i feel the pain instead of moving away from the pain i go towards it I say, yeah go for it give it to me because pain is not something that we want to experience pain is a signal sent to the body to this i'm gonna die but when you consciously know that I'm not going to die, you can go towards the pain. It says, okay, bring on the pain. Let's see what's on the other side. Because usually it's the ego that is getting attached and it's way for the body to protect itself. And then the breath can do its magic. But I love that, you know, when you expressed it, you kind of said, I always do the shaking. Right? I think in a way it is, you know, what's the point of a good breath if you, if you haven't done that first? So these movements that you describe and the shaking and the release of the hips are, are a way to enter the breath with the right intention. It doesn't have to come from the mind, but it's just say, all right, let's, let's see what's, what's there. What, wh how, how do you re react to that? What do you think? Yeah, well, what's actually coming to mind, it's a little bit of a tension, but, but I think it relates beautifully, is yoga, right? So if you think about the actual asana of yoga and the purpose of asana, it's, you know, it's, it's an, and it's been kind of diluted a little bit in the West, right? Where now asana is often just um, a means in its own to, to come to a place of physical prowess, right? Which is of course amazing and beautiful. But originally asana was a practice to come into meditation, right? The idea of asana is, is there to open the body lines, open and create a felt experience in the body of openness, of receptivity, of allowing things to be channeled and processed effortlessly because there is no stagnation. There is no tension in the body. When there's no tension, things can flow quite freely. So exactly like Alex is saying, shaking is a similar tool in that way. Movement of any kind is a tool in that way. Um, it actually reminds me also of, uh, of a physiotherapist that I, I, I'm not working with, but uh, I'm in the same company as him. And he, again, also talks about very clearly that movement is medicine. So for the idea of even if you're sitting for long periods of time, simply by changing your posture um, in a more frequent way, let's say every 10, 15 minutes, just change the way you're seating. If you're standing, if you're maybe kneeling, if you have one leg over the top of the other, if maybe there's a twist, like just adding different forms of being seated. And that movement, again, is helping to release stagnation from the body. So all of these things come back to the idea that, yeah, we need to set ourselves up by doing a physical practice that allows the body to remain open. And again, it comes back even to animals, right? If you look at a cat or a dog, they're constantly doing mini stretching sessions throughout the day, right? That's, that's, an aid. that's not just because they want to be limber and capable. It's actually because it allows the body, again, to come back into a felt safe place of openness and receptivity. So it's all, it's all connected in that way. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, I think we need that right now. <sighs> totally yeah exactly yeah everyone watching just take a few seconds to just get oh, into the body idea, you know yeah. do some movements you know and, and back yeah look at that ah. yeah like a great one even, even yeah just the one you can do very easily is, is some qigong you can do that like opening through the chest expanding up and out through the spine and then just collapsing down, curving the spine, going back and forth between these motions. And it's a beautiful way to do something very simple and seated. And go to the side, open through the side body a little bit, come back. Right, this kind of thing is beautiful. Working through the chest, the shoulders, the rib cage, the spine. And then just coming back and yeah, just a little shake and that's all you really need really, right? If you did, if you did like those every, every 15 minutes, you'd be doing great, right? Yeah, man. Love it. Love it. Ah, uh, one thing that's what came to me recently, that idea of also taking time to witness myself, 
because yeah. instead of um, directing the body to just pose and just witness, what am I doing? Because usually the body is taking care of itself. So maybe if you're doing certain things, it's, it's interesting to question, why am I doing something? And that can be, uh, no, I'm going to eat some sugar. Why am I attracted and why do I want to eat some sugar right now? What it is that I'm, what's underneath that? Or, you know, mm -hmm. things that are come, not because you decided and you've got your routine and you're controlling the body and you're control. Okay, that's, that's, that's often how men we operate says, okay, I'm in control. I'm, I'm on top of it. Da, 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 da. Yeah. But if, yeah. when you're not that, when you're just le uh, witnessing where is my energy and, and, and then all of a sudden questioning, why am I doing this? Why, why did I do that? Why did I behave in this uh, particular matter, uh, manner with this person? Or, um, and, and just checking in, am I honoring myself? Am I in integrity with yeah. myself? Or am I compromising myself? Or am I doing it because I actually have an intention that is not completely in integrity? So just having these moments of pose, and again, using the breath to just, ah, okay, now let's get the bullshit. Why, what's going on here? What's going on? All right, why, yeah. why what's, let's, let's have a, let, and, and, and I, I, I love that practice. I, I saw that recently also is just look at yourself in the mirror. You know, Michael Jackson. Totally. Just look at yourself, you know, and just spend a bit of time eye gazing with yourself, which is very hard to do. When are you yeah. really eye gazing? You know, you look when you look at yourself in the mirror, you're checking your hair. I mean, you do, I don't, but you know, you're you're checking if, if something physical going on in your body and whether you like it or yeah. not. But when yeah. do you look at yourself beyond that? Just spending time checking in with your soul, with okay, what's what's how are we doing? What are, what's going on? And yeah, do you do that? Absolutely. Um, it actually reminds me of an incredible book. Um, you can heal, you can heal your life. You can heal yourself. Hmm. Uh, I believe it's uh, Louise Hay or Deborah Hay. I always forget which one. I'm going to look it up right now. Um, let me see here. You can heal your life. Yeah, there it is. Yes. Louise Hay. Uh, incredible book that uh, I went through um, years ago now and still utilize those tools and one of them is uh, yeah going into the mirror and speaking affirmations or simply just talking to yourself right or acknowledging and giving yourself self-love right and that's huge um, and I think that's something I take away from that practice in particular is recognizing how we relate to ourselves recognizing how we acknowledge um, our own experiences you know whether those are pleasurable or difficult how do we what is our relationship with ourself, particularly when things get challenging, right? Mm. And yeah, you can, you, can, you can really see that very clearly when you're doing eye, eye gazing in the mirror, right? You can see very clearly whether there's a sense of comfort, of love, of acceptance, or if there is, um, yeah, refusal to even do so. If there's, you know, resistance, if there's negativity, if you uh, see yourself and there's immediately judgment, right? And not that that's wrong, but just a, it's a good tool to see where you're at, right? Yeah. Yeah, the, the, yeah, hundred percent support that. And for me, it 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 came down to having an understanding of why I was doing what am I doing what I'm doing. And yeah. it's easy because it's it's easy, but it's not simple. It's easy because it's always something that is related to your childhood. Mm -hmm. It's everything is done before seven, and most likely between zero and three. So it's the more you will have. Um, and I did, yeah, I'm behaving, let's say, you know, I'm behaving, I'm an asshole with woman. And you can blame yourself for being an asshole with woman. Or you can witness that, hey, you know, this is the model I had as a kid. Or this is how I saw my dad behave with my mother. So now all of a sudden, you can um, just witness and understand, okay, this is how I behave. Now I make a mental note that it's not okay and I need to change that. But I can also understand the wounded child that got to experience that and have compassion for myself because, yeah, I'm, I'm doing this, but I, I, of course, who wouldn't? And now all of a sudden you, 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 can, you can move on. 
and you're able to move to the next level of, your, of yourself. But it's very important to remain kind with yourself and, and having this, because it's easy to just go into blame or victim and, 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 totally. and one or the other and, and staying stuck, stuck there. Yeah, I, I love to speak that a little bit. I, I'm, I'm learning a little bit more about, about these things. And I feel one thing that is important to recognize is often, uh, particularly when you're doing inner child work, there is often a need that wasn't met at some level when you were a child, right? And so if you can come to a place of, of recognizing, maybe if that if we're using um, having unhealthy relationships with women, uh, if you're, yeah, if that's your experience, perhaps there is a mother wound there where, where maybe you weren't, you didn't receive the attention that you needed. And maybe your mom was very busy and, you know, working her butt off to provide for you or, or I, I'm not sure, maybe she was dealing with her own trauma in some way, but basically you, were perceived this uh, experience, you had the, this very valid experience of not receiving love and the way you needed, of being ignored, of being abandoned, of um, yeah, of somehow not being recognized for for your qualities, your strengths, whatever it is, right? And but coming back to that moment of recognizing a need there and how that need now then corresponds to how you uh, react and treat women in this example, right? Or yourself, or whatever it is. But coming back to that that moment of what need was not met, right? Yeah. It can be very helpful and very powerful. And what you said is very important because often people associate trauma with something terrible. And right. it, it's, it's something, um, and, and, and we don't feel entitled to feel and, and name things that happened to us as traumas because it was not, my, I didn't get beaten, I didn't get raped. So right. who, am I to, right. to, uh, who am I to feel sorry for myself? And it's it's and, and, and we don't allow ourselves to be sorry for ourselves for, for, for because yeah, mommy was working and, and, and that's not that's not cool. And but you know, right. of course she had to work. So we almost don't allow ourselves to feel that. So it's really to acknowledge that, you know, we all have traumas and it's all related to you know, we go through childhood and and I love the work of Gabor Mate there. Says yes. we all share the same trauma, basically, that as a child, you had to please mommy and daddy to stay alive. So you had to, if I am going to be myself and I speak my truth, maybe they're going to reject me because I disagree with them. Mm -hmm. I think what they do is stupid. But if I say that, they're not going to feed me. So I can't yes. say that. So very early on, we learn to just compromise our identity and our strong belief in order to be accepted. And we just carry that on in our relationship, in our groups, in our society, because we just try to fit in. We want to be accepted. And, 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 and that's, that's, that's a, shared, a shared trauma. Now, Damien, I'm Absolutely. conscious of the time. I right, yeah. One, one question is about, uh, uh, one last question which is, Please. what do you do? What is your daily routine? Yeah. What is Damien's daily routine? And after that, I'll give you some time to share whatever you felt you wanted to share and didn't have time for. Wonderful, thank you so much, Alex. Yeah, um, my daily routine, uh, I've been playing with it, so it's definitely still something I, I am evolving with, and, and I think there needs to be a certain amount of flexibility. Um, so I wanna speak just briefly to the idea that I think it's more important to show up, show up with as much consistency as possible, um, as opposed to having to have a very set, like it has to be this way or no way, right? I think we often we get this mindset, if it's not done the right way, I shouldn't do it at all. And I'm just going to throw it all the, out the window, right? And so simply the idea of showing up as consistent as you can, as much as you're able to, and that that, yeah, that, that is key, right? And that might not be perfect either, right? But the sense that you know at some point, at some level, that that is the intention behind behind a, a, a practice, right? Is to show up as much as you're able to, for as long as you're able to. So I want to speak to that a little bit, but yeah, for me personally, uh, breath work is is key. So I, I usually start with a breath work practice. Um, there used to be I used to do more Wim Hof, uh, back, uh, you know, back in the day. Uh, and now more it's breath wave. And so, but any breath work practice I find to be a beautiful way of, again, coming back into the body, of coming back into a felt sense of, of where you're at today. I find that it allows, um, yeah, it, it allows a lot of processing, a lot of like coming into clarity with where I am right now, how I want to move forward, what is really important to me, what is um, my purpose for today, you know, in some way. Um, lately, I've been following a breathwork practice up with a meditation practice, um, which I find to be a beautifully complementary. 
Um, and then, yeah, often and during the day, I'll include a movement practice for sure. And that's also very, very important to me personally. How do you meditate by yourself? Do you listen to an audio or what? what do yeah, you know? variations on things. So um, I've had a few beautiful teachers that I, I really resonate with. Um, Pema Chodron comes to mind as an incredible, um, yeah, uh, facilitator. Uh, she's a Tibetan Buddhist nun incredible teacher um so I, I used to listen to her non-stop for a long time she is she's phenomenal uh lately i've been listening to a man named adi ashanti um beautiful again beautiful practitioner beautiful teacher and guide um and then, all course, that, guys, i'll put it in the notes let's yeah get some good stuff yeah cool thank you uh, and then insight timer is a beautiful app it's free um but you also can pay for it and um yeah it's a wonderful app it has so many options so many guided facilitations and of course just a, a regular a timer as well where you can have like simple background music or no background music you know your choice entirely and i find that to be very helpful as well so yeah anything you yeah. wish you had shared that you didn't have time for mm. Mm. Yeah, I think the one last thing that I would love to speak to that I'm, I'm, I'm playing with and, and trying to be more consistent with myself is that sense of gratitude of, of really taking time to notice what I'm grateful for in my life, but also in a similar fashion, um, if I have taken time to really speak to myself, to acknowledge how the language I use throughout the day, how I have been speaking to myself internally, or you know externally um I, I do talk to myself but actually <laughs> um and yeah just taking a moment to reflect and bring gratitude to yourself to you know the people in your life to just having this life in general there's so many things to be grateful for and i think it's really easy for most of us to get caught up in what's not working and the things that are negative you know negative um and as opposed to really bringing your awareness into this it's actually in breath work, we call it miracle consciousness, right? And so this idea of tuning into the qualities that you want to embody in your life. And I feel like gratitude brings you beautifully into that, that space of how do I want to show up as opposed to focusing on what's not working. So yeah, I'll speak to that quickly. And yeah, just also thank you very much, Alex. It's a pleasure being here. I really appreciate this time. And yeah, thank you. No, that was really, really awesome. I'm very honored i really enjoyed it oh i love this this conversation so i'm really really grateful and uh we have the next training in january so i look forward also to have you come as one of the coaches share some amazing movements and get us awesome. into, into it all so have a wonderful yeah. uh day damien it's evening for us in paris and uh, daytime in the u.s so enjoy enjoy a beautiful day and um, everyone, tell us what you do. What do you do in the morning? Tell us what you do about these movements. Ask questions, you know, um, engage below and tell us what you, what you think of this video. All right. Thank you, Damien. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye, guys.